Hi everybody, it's great to be with you. Um, I'm recording this little extra talk um, to go alongside um, the Sunday sermon I did um, this Sunday and hopefully you've seen that before, but it doesn't really matter if you haven't. Uh, this talk is going to be a really, really practical guide to using the Lord's Prayer as a structure for your personal prayer life. Um, I've been using the Lord's Prayer for many, many years now, over a decade, as the structure for my uh, prayer time in the morning. Um, I find it incredibly helpful to have a, a kind of flexible structure that I can use. Um, and it is made a really, really big difference to me, it made a big difference when I was learning how to pray, pray and it still helps me uh, now. Um, of course, the Lord's Prayer is originally uh, found in the Gospels. Jesus teaches his disciples to pray in all of the Gospels. And um, this Lord's Prayer that we're using is the one that comes from Matthew chapter 6. Now, I know that many of us are used to using the Lord's Prayer um, as a single prayer, just praying through, through it line by line. I think that's fine, but I'm not sure actually that is the way that we were supposed to use it. Um, for me... Um, I, I like to use it as a, as, a, as a structure into which I can bring my own personal prayer. Um, I, I've broken it down into different sections and I sort of treat each line as a coat hanger, um, uh, as sort of something to hang my own, my own prayers, bring my own um, voice to God, my own personal concerns and fill out the Lord's Prayer with my own um, quiet time. And I find this um, really, really really helpful. I hope you will too. A few things um, that I love about using the Lord's Prayer. Um, uh, number one, uh, it gives me something to say. Um, uh, this can just be really, really helpful sometimes, especially when you're learning to pray for the first time. I remember just putting the time in the diary, sitting down in the morning, just saying, well, what do I say? Where do I start? Um, it can also be really helpful when we're going through a hard time in life. Um, we're just don't know which is way is up or we just feel a bit shell-shocked or, or just tired and sometimes we come and just we sit there and we think what are we going to pray and it could be really helpful to have something to work work through that isn't too formulaic but still gives us a starting point as we go through it another thing that i love about using the lord's prayer is that it keeps my prayer life balanced um, it can be easy i think to get uh, to allow your prayer life to be swallowed up by one thing or another. Maybe it's just spending the whole time worshipping God. Maybe we're more inclined to just come and spend the whole time asking God for things or just confessing all the things we're worried about. And it can be easy as well to leave things out, uh, to not ever confess our sin or forgive others, to not ever come and ask for things. And I love that when I use the Lord's Prayer, it, it's like um, it forces me uh, to have a balanced diet. Um, all of the different parts are here and if I, if I use this as a structure I feel like it rounds out my daily prayer time. And finally also I really believe that there is a God-inspired flow to the Lord's Prayer. Of course it's God-inspired. Jesus taught us to pray like this and, and I find that as I pray in the order of the Lord's Prayer it's really powerful and informative is something really special about starting our prayer time, focusing on God, focusing on our, our love for him and our relationship with him, with worship. And as we'll see, there's a flow to the Lord's Prayer that I think changes the way we pray. And I think over time that makes a massive difference to us. It aligns us with him and his purposes. So I find the Lord's Prayer really, really helpful. And uh, we're going to chat through it now. And I hope you'll find it helpful too. So the first thing um, you'll want to do is actually see if you can get a copy of this. Um, the uh, download link should be uh, on in the video description below, or you could probably go to the resources page on the website at HT, um, uh, or you can email me and I can send you one. And it might be helpful to have this up as, you, as we talk through it. Um, a few things to say, first of all, uh, when you have a look at this, you'll see I've broken up the Lord's Prayer into nine parts. And um, first of all, it's not a commentary on the Lord's Prayer. This is not a scholarly unpacking of it, although I have done lots of reading and into the Lord's Prayer, but this is actually primarily just a practical way to use the Lord's Prayer for yourself. 
of praying. And number two, um, it, this is not the only way to use the Lord's Prayer or to pray in general. This is just one way, this is just my way. At the same time, uh, when over the years, many, many, many people have come and talked to me about learning to pray, I've talked them through this, they've taken away the, one of these copies and I've had so much feedback to say this has been helpful for, for, for people that I'm fairly confident um, that it's a great way to start praying. Um, it's also really flexible so you can change it over the years. So if you can grab one of those, it will help you. Um, uh, what I suggest uh, for using the Lord's Prayer, my suggestion is that um, you pray to start with three to five minutes for, on each of these topics. If you pray for three minutes on each of these nine topics, spend three minutes each one, you will have prayed for half an hour and you will almost certainly feel like you didn't have enough time. And that's great. And I, you know, you can extend it. You can pray for an hour. That's what I do using uh, this and just extend each section. Um, uh, for me, um, I sometimes, I've got a Spotify playlist and um, you'll find a Spotify playlist um, suggestion below. And I um, sometimes have a song for each one of these. And I just have the playlist running and I just pray it and till the song finishes and then I move on and I've kind of got a song that's a bit more relevant to each one and that helps me with my timing it also helps me uh, to worship as I go through it uh, so um, that's what I suggest um, find a quiet place if you can in the house find a comfortable place if it's in the morning uh, make sure you're awake uh, have a shower grab a cup of coffee be comfortable um, and then and then have this and um, I'd just like to walk you through, most of uh, how to use it is here, but I'll just walk you through uh, each part and um, how, how, to, how I pray the Lord's Prayer in the mornings. The prayer, of course, begins with our Father. And I really use this as an opportunity to just sit with God and remember that he loves me and choose to love him back. Um, there's no great agenda in this time, but so often when we rush into prayer, it's asking or mulling over the problems of the day or whatever it might be. But I think Jesus starts with our Father for a reason. Uh, we, we can take time to remember um, all that Jesus has done for us, that we can be adopted into God's family. Uh, take time, I often take a few moments to just sit with God quietly, to shut my eyes, ask for his Holy Spirit to come, ask him to remind me of his love. And, um, and I remember if often the things that Jesus has done to forgive me and bring me into his family. So I use the first three to five minutes of my quiet time um, to, to enjoy God's presence, to remember his love for me, to invite his presence and to love him back. No real agenda. The next line is, uh, who is in the heavens? who is in the heavens. Uh, and I pause here to dwell on who God is. I start by dwelling on his love for me, his relationship for me, uh, with me, but then I move on to just reminding myself some of the big things about who he is. God's sovereignty, uh, the fact that he, 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 he made all of us. I've got some verses here that sometimes I open up. I sometimes take time to recall some of the mighty acts of God in Scripture. If I've been reading the Bible beforehand, I might just dwell on, oh, yes, Lord, you're like that. Yes, Lord, you answered these promises. And I just spend some time, not so much praying, actually, but just reminding myself who it is that I'm coming to pray uh, with, who it is I come to meet with in the morning. It really, really helps me. The next thing I do under hallowed be your name is I spend some time worshipping. Uh, often I'll put some songs on, sometimes I'll just sit, but I use this time both to praise and to thank God. Um, really, all I'm trying to do is make sure that before my day has begun, before this quiet time is finished, I have said at least once from the heart, hallowed be your name. Lift it up be your name, worship be your name. And I think it can take some time uh, to, to bring our hearts round to that, um, to, to, to honestly choose to worship and glorify God. We can do that silently, we can do that with song, 
Um, but having remembered his love for us, having remembered who he is, I take some time to express that to him. And sometimes I take this opportunity just to thank him for as many things as I possibly can. For prayers answered, for warm coffee, for a roof over my head, um, all kinds of things that I can think of. So I remember his love for me, I remember who he is, and then I worship. And then we come to praying. And the first thing we invite to pray is your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. And I really use this as an opportunity to surrender to God, to say, Lord, I surrender to your agenda. Again, so often if we rush into prayer, we bring our concerns, our worries, our guilt, our needs before God, all the things we think need to change. But actually, I think the first thing to do in prayer, once we've remembered who he is and worshipped him, is to lay it all down and to remember that God and his kingdom comes first. So I choose to declare him Lord over my life. I also choose to um, remember the things that he desires, remind myself what his kingdom looks like. Sometimes I read 1 Corinthians 13 about uh, God's love. Sometimes James 3 about God's wisdom. Sometimes Galatians, the fruits of the spirit or the Beatitudes in Matthew. Just remind myself what his agenda is and what his kingdom looks like. And then I often uh, go through the parts of my life that I'm worried about or, or I care about and lay them down before, um, before God. Just an act of trusting him with them and laying them down before his agenda. And actually over the years I've developed a series of cards with things that I care about. Some of them good, some of them bad. Um, I care about uh, my savings. I care about my health. I care about my marriage. Or when I was single, I really cared about being single and trying to f finding someone um, uh, these things that are on our hearts and before I pray about them and ask about them I always spend time in this section laying them down entrusting them to God saying it's your kingdom come you are Lord and I trust this for you and then also another thing I do is to pray for the things that God cares about God cares about his church God cares about people coming to know him God cares about um, people on the other side of the globe that I don't care about and just trying to spend some time praying into the things that God cares about. Your kingdom come. That brings us to the second page. And the next thing is your will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I use this slot as an opportunity to listen to God. Um, I use it as an opportunity to really ask God what his will is. And so I use this as an opportunity to bring him decisions that I have to make either that day or things that are on my in tray. So easy, to, isn't it, to just have decisions, uh, to pray in general, but then just go away and make them um, away from God. But I find it, you know, we believe in a God who speaks, not all the time, but definitely does speak, can speak, and wants us to be bringing him into our decisions. So I use this as an opportunity to sit, I lay my decisions down before God, and I spend some time in each one um, to see if, just listening to his spirit, has he got anything to say? Does he have a verse of the Bible he wants to remind me of? Does he want to bring something to mind? And often I have a little notepad and I try and jot down anything he says. So I use your will be done as an opportunity for listening. Then we get to give us this day our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. And this is an invitation to actually ask, to ask for the things we need. The thing is, though, I find it really helpful to wait until this point to pray for the things I think I need. Because when you leave it to here, it's really, really changed by the fact that you have done all of these things. It's different to ask when you've reminded yourself that your, our Father loves us and cares for us. It's different to ask when we've worshipped him, reminded ourselves of his sovereignty, his goodness. It's not a frantic asking. It's we're coming to the sovereign Lord of all. And it's really different to ask when we have laid our agenda down before God's. And it changes what we ask for. Suddenly it's not just about all the things that I want. Suddenly this is about asking God for the things we need to live the life he's called us to. Sometimes that means not asking for some things. And sometimes it means asking for things we wouldn't have before. But there is still a place to ask. And when I get to this place, I ask for everything and anything, however big, 
however small. Uh, things that are personal, things that are emotional, things that are spiritual, and things that are really, really practical. I need this. Lord, I, and I often just ask him, Lord, I think your agenda is this. I think this is what, Lord, so this is what I ask for. And I just use that time to ask. Often I feel I can't get this into five minutes and this end time means ends up being a bit more practical. I also use this as a time to pray for the practical and spiritual needs of others. Friends, family, missionaries, HT, things like that. So I ask. Then it, that brings us to forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. It is great to have a time in our prayer time every day where we come before God and ask for forgiveness. Of course, he has forgiven us through the cross, but he still asks us to come and lay these things down before him, to be honest and to ask for his renewed forgiveness each day. Some of us might be tempted to make this the first part of our prayer, to start coming into the presence of God, feeling guilty, I'm sorry, Lord, you know, let me just ask for forgiveness before I pray. But actually, again, I think it's helpful to have this here, um, to wait. I don't think the first thing we should feel when we come into the presence of God is guilt. There's, but at the same time, Jesus has taught us there is a place in our prayer life. There should be a place in our prayer life for asking for forgiveness. And so what I do is I just bring the last few days or today um, before God and, 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 and I ask for forgiveness. I actually start not just by listing the things that I think I've done wrong, but by taking a few moments, asking God, is there anything you want to highlight? Anything you care about? Maybe I don't care about, but you care about. What is it that I need to ask for forgiveness? Then I come again to the cross I imagine being before the cross. I thank Jesus for all that he's done for me. And I acknowledge these things before him. And I ask for his forgiveness afresh. The other thing I do in this time is to spend some time to sense whether I need to forgive somebody else. And again, I often sit and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, is there anyone I'm angry at? Is there anyone I am struggling with? Is there anyone I need to um, forgive um, or apologize to. And often when I give that time to God, he will highlight something that I need to apologize for or someone I need to forgive. And these two things come together. As Jesus says, when we ask for forgiveness, we also need to choose to, to forgive others and release them of their debts because that's what Jesus has done for us. And if I can muster it, and this can be very hard and very personal, I spend some time praying for those people, positively blessing them, in God's name, the people that I need to forgive. Of course, sometimes we actually, if something, God highlights something, we actually need to go and do something and say sorry or change something, um, but that might come later. And that brings us to the penultimate uh, part of the prayer. Um, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I use this as a time really to ask for God's help and protection uh, looking forwards. Asking forgiveness is about looking backwards. What have I done uh, that I need to deal with? Asking for protection and uh, help is looking forward. And really I use it as an opportunity to invite the Holy Spirit afresh into my life. So I open up saying, Lord, I want your love, joy, peace, patience. I need your wisdom. I need your kindness. And to invite God to come and strengthen me for that day. Clothe me in his armour. I also, though, do use it a bit more specifically. I very often will get my diary up. I will look through the day and I will ask, when are the pinch points going to be? That meeting's going to be difficult. I'm going to struggle not to lose my temper in that one. Um, I know uh, I don't want to do this. I'm going to need God's strength, self-discipline to do that. I know this might be a point of temptation. I'm going to pray for God's help. So I can sometimes be a bit more specific. But I invite God to help me in that day. And then finally... Uh, this isn't uh, in the Matthew version, um, but uh, traditionally uh, Christians have prayed for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever at the end of the Lord's Prayer. And I think this is a great addition and basically I use it to end my prayer time in worship again. Uh, starting with the Lord and with worship and it's great to end having pray, 
just putting another song on or just spending some time worshiping God and finishing there. And as I say, if you if you do this three to five minutes and you will have somewhere between half an hour and an hour of prayer. And I guarantee you, you will feel you haven't had time uh, to really pray each of these out. Um, it's helpful for a, one prayer time and over over years, this begins to fashion and form the way that you think and the way that you pray. So download this, look for the Spotify um, uh, playlist or grab, make one yourself with worship music. Um, try it out uh, and let me know how it goes. I hope it really helps you. It certainly helped me. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.